Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Davani. I got here Nopara. Uh, he's, uh, as he calls himself on Twitter, the, uh, the software artist, or or you can also we can also call him the lead developer at Wasabi Wallet. Is that correct? Uh, Nopara, why don't you just introduce yourself? Thanks so much for coming on my show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yes, you can say I'm the lead developer, but I'm not really leading anyone because people are really enthusiastic. So they find uh, things by themselves, what to work on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now. I've been following you f for quite some time and, you know, and all the updates and, and, and the information that's coming from Wasabi Wallet. And I have myself downloaded Wasabi Wallet, but to be honest with you, I've never transacted with it. I have not a single Satoshi on it. Uh, I just wanted, you know, in case I thought if I, you know, download like many other people are planning to or are thinking of um, uh, doing a full note, which I'm, I'm still far away from that. I thought, why don't you give us, you know, a little bit of insight or, you know, what is the, or do, why don't you just tell us a little bit, the listeners and the viewers, what's the bigger picture behind Wasabi Wallet? What was the primary intention and vision of Wasabi? And f uh, for what kind of target audience is it, is it for actually? Mm -hmm. So it started out as a privacy project and it is still a privacy project, but now uh, we have a lot of power users and uh, it ended up being a very, very advanced wallet. Uh, so you, you can use it as your, your main desktop wallet, uh, except if you have a full node and you want to run a full node because now you can connect Wasabi to your full node, but it's not a fully featured connection, like uh, you are not using it for validation, only for downloading blocks. Um, but we want to ship with Bitcoin Core in the future. Uh, so, 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 so that's the APL there for if you are using a full node uh, other than the privacy. That uh, yeah, it's a, it's a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, you can do many things with it. Uh, I'd like to think it is intuitive, but lately I've been getting different feedback. I mean, so it it was very intuitive in the beginning, and it I think still is. But now we are getting into the mainstream, and the mainstream thinks differently of what intuitive and than what the Bitcoin cypherpunks are, who were our main users. So, so, so now actually, just, just, just a couple of, just a, yeah, a couple of days ago, uh, I, I, I created a feature freeze. Uh, I, I made a feature freeze and t t talk the developers that okay, look, uh, more and more people think that Wasabi is less and less uh, user friendly. Uh, so now we have to stop developing features and have to start concentrating on the user experience for a while until the reports are stopped coming in. So, so I am very, very aware of the problem. Uh, and I wouldn't say it's a huge problem because if you have ever used the Bitcoin wallet in desktop before, then you will be able to use Wasabi. It just, uh, now we have more more mainstream users, and we have to to serve them too, not only the 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 cyberpunks. Exactly, yeah, that's what I was going for. Because, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't. I mean, I don't know the people. I would, um, I would, you know, if if I had like, if I if I would ask them uh, whether they would be willing to, you know, uh, get to know Wasabi Wallet and educate themselves. I'm not sure whether they would be ready. Um, now, when you say mainstream users, what, what kind of mainstream users are those? Are these the mainstream users who have, let's say, a little bit more than the average person, you know, experience, knowledge, um, and interaction or background information, you know, how to install, what to look out for, you know, uh, security measures. I mean, there's so many side steps and and in between steps that need to be taken. Uh, what do you think? What do you think from your perspective are the are the real challenges, the the hurdles for 
you know, really a, a mainstream adoption. So mainstream adoption on Wasabi or on Bitcoin in general? Uh, uh, <laughs> on Wasabi, yeah. On wasabi. Yeah, let's keep it uh, in context. So in Wasabi, the only goal was a, where we were developing our user experience that if you have ever used the Bitcoin wallet before uh, on a desktop, then you will be able to use Wasabi. But now, so I noticed this, that many, many people are, have never used the desktop Bitcoin wallet or not even a blockchain info like Bitcoin wallet. They either use the mobile wallet or, or just, 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 just an exchange that was their Bitcoin wallet. Uh, so, so this is the biggest challenge to how to make them able to use a software because you have to teach them a lot of things. Uh, some things are not are not are, are non-negotiable. So, I, I I'm very I'm very keen. I'm very okay with compromising on many things, but uh, they're the only thing that I am not okay with compromising is that what ruins privacy. So yeah. I would say the only compromise, only complexity in Wasabi is because of privacy or because we were just, uh, well, I wouldn't say lazy, but uh, we had features. What we see that, oh, this takes a long time to implement. And if we implement it this way, it's a bit more complex from a user's perspective, but it's easier to implement. And now I, I'm, of course, I don't want to, I, I'm not, we are not going to reduce complexity where privacy is important. We are reducing complexity on those features, what we implemented because it was easy those way. So we will implement those features in a easier to use way in, instead of easier to implement way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, excellent. You know, the reason I'm saying this because I mean I, I would say for myself that I you know I have pretty much experience. Uh, let's you know uh, compared to the average person out there who has never you know dealt with Bitcoin or a wallet or uh but still I'm a layman. I would call myself still a layman, even though experienced. Now I had as I as already told you and, and wrote you know, a feedback to Wasabi, you know, whatever, what it was on GitHub or Reddit or whatever, is that uh, I already had installed the Wasabi wallet. And then when the update came, I really had to uh, re reinstall the whole thing because I couldn't do the, up the update myself. I couldn't uh, certify uh, or, you know, check whether there's, you know, the digital certificate or whatever it's called is is a legitimate is valid authentic then it didn't work out you know like really li little things i'm sure you would have worked out if i had like an assistant but in the end i was like okay i got my monomic passphrase so it should be no problem i just deinstalled the whole thing reinstalled it and so, so i had the latest version on my desktop finally but i i guess what i'm trying to say is that uh, it's okay if it's a little bit technical, if people need to, you know, uh, you know, think along the lines and between the lines. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that it may be, uh, you know, really clear instructional, I don't know, videos or, or you know, instructions uh, uh, that, that is, you know, easily comprehensible by, by the average person would be a great help, you know, in boosting sort of the the acceptance and the you know and the usage and the easy usage of of the wasabi wallet what do you what do you think about that regarding installation um verifying your verifying the file that it comes from me is admittedly quite uh, quite hard um uh, now, many people don't do that. And if you don't do that, then it's just, you download and click install and that's it. But it seems like what you even had problems with this. Uh, I don't understand the, 
you you had problems with 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 the without verification stuff yeah i just you know there's these instructions on uh on github you know what you have to do what to look at which which file you have to click i did all that i followed all the instructions i even you know tried different browsers on first on you know on chrome and, and then on a firefox then i opened even the tour browser separately and then that didn't work out so you know so i just did it very regular on chrome so I thought, okay, then there's this like AC, is that something like the file ACI or ACE file um, that was supposed sort of to show me whether the, the, you know, the, the, the source or the, the certificate is legitimate, authentic. That didn't work out either. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I just followed the instructions and it still didn't work. So I'm, I asked myself, you know, I don't know, am I too stupid for that <laughs> or, 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 or are there like alternative ways to do that? Um, it's, it's, and, and I'm like, you know, maybe we should have a little bit more, uh, 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 you know, understanding and empathy for, for people with people that, that have, that don't just, just lack, you know, they just lack the experience with these kind of procedures. Um, and my, I mean, my desire, my wish is that it becomes really user friendly. I think this user friendliness, even though I know we are in the early stages of developing, you know, uh, it is, it is, it must be a challenge. But do you see? I mean, what what, what process do you see? I mean, uh, that you know, we can uh, uh, improve this, you know, situation a little bit for the average. Yes. So. <clears throat> the thing is, for Windows and OS X, you would not have to verify the signatures because in Windows, you have the code signing. So if you don't see a big red cross uh, when you are installing the software, then the signature verification is, is, is verified because there is another way to, to verify signatures. So it's doing the exact same thing, it's just different. On OS X, it would be the exact same as Windows, but we don't sign, we don't do code signing in OS X. And there is a very simple reason for that, that our build processes are happening on Windows and Ubuntu and not on OS X. And the OS X sign tool is a, uh, is, uh, proprietary software so you cannot launch it from windows or ubuntu so we have to add an osx software to our build process which is problematic because apple doesn't let you to run a virtual machine on your computer so we have to delegate it to the cloud my point is that it's a it's a it's a surprisingly lot of work. Now, the signature verification should only be done on Linux, uh, except now on OS X2, because of course we don't sign on OS X. Regarding Windows, maybe we should even take it down because it might even just confuse people. Uh, it's, it's, it's redundant in a way, right? Uh, you, you can, because Windows is doing the exact same thing with, with the code signing. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. Uh, we have an issue opened on GitHub that, that we should simplify this process because, I mean, PGP, GPG is not the most user-friendly thing in the world, right? Okay. Uh, in, in fact, even, even, uh, even on Linux, uh, if we would put it on a repository, I think that that thing would check uh, signatures automatically. So, you know, I don't know, apt get uh, whatever Wasabi and install Wasabi and then that checks, checks your signature instead of uh, you are doing it manually. So, so, so yes, uh, you know, it's a continuous process. We got this far and we know that we have to go this far and we are going that far, but we think uh, we have bigger problems somewhere here. So before we are working on here, we are working on here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, sorry about that, but it's, it's coming along uh, very well over the problem. Uh, some, some, some fine solution. Uh, just uh, what do you work on first? And we were 
we were working on hardware wallet integration and features and now we have a feature freeze to, to fix up all these little problems uh, so so that's 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 what's going on in in the background i know it's 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 not a good excuse uh well, on the bright side i mean it's it's happening it's just uh not not tomorrow <laughs> yeah it needs it this time in patience and a lot of co you know i guess um collaboration also uh with other people i guess um um other experts um i got your twitter page over here and let me see you you got a, a really nice uh medium page where you have tons of articles that you've published it's i i read through some of them it's really amazing. Now, let me uh, uh, ask you a very simple question, uh, Napara. Um, now, the Wasabi wallet was or has been intended only as a desktop wallet, not as a mobile wallet ever. Or, or am I? Did I get wrong? No, you, you got it right. Mm -hmm. It's not not a mobile wallet because, I mean, again, new features, more complexity uh what do you work on first and uh, mobile is something that we are not planning to work on uh for a for a long time there are really fine mobile wallets out there uh yeah for example samurai i mean would, would you say samurai is a, is a good reliable you know also concerning privacy is it a you know because i got one i mean uh would you say it's one of the or would you i don't know or can you can you talk about it uh, can you give a sort of a evaluation on what mo one more mobile wallets you know are reliable trustworthy and in terms of privacy really good i would not like to comment on samurai sure okay okay good <laughs> okay but the enough. problems with light wallet in, light wallets in general is that how do you the privacy problems with light wallets in general how do you establish your wallet balance? How do you how do you really know that? Like, how does your wallet really show that? Hey, you have this much money in your in your wallet, and this is a very surprisingly complex issue because you know there is the blockchain with the 160 gigabyte of data, and you don't have that 160 gigabyte of data on your mobile yeah. on your desktop. Yeah. Uh, unless you are running a full node. If you run a full node, then you just pick the, you just get the, get the, get your balance, establish your wallet balance from that 150 gigabytes. So there is no privacy leak there. It's, it's on your data. You just, mm -hmm. on your disk, you just have to read it. Now the issue is when you don't have that data locally, then you, what do you do? You ask someone who has that data. And if you ask someone who has that data, then that someone knows that based on what you are asking, he knows exactly what you are, what information you are looking for. And uh, this is one of the big part of Wasabi that we were able to build a wallet in a way that you don't have that data locally yet you don't expose sensitive information to to anyone okay i see mm -hmm. um well i guess the whole point of a of a mobile wallet is you know to have uh, you know this uh, proverbial uh, uh paying with for the coffee <laughs> sort of you have sort of a small petty cash on the mobile wallet and i guess you know that's sort of the trade off that you say, you know, you don't have much, you have a few, a couple of Satoshis. So if you want to pay your coffee, whatever, uh, you know, a, a small thing with it, then you sort of accept that trade-off with all these, you know, features that you're talking about, right? Privacy, uh, security, uh, trustlessness, right? Uh, am I right? I mean, I'm just talking out of a layman's <laughs> perspective. Because my, my concern is that, okay, are the people outside, you know, all these people outside that maybe tiptoeing slowly into Bitcoin and Satoshis, are they really grasping what this whole discussion is about in the background? 
you know, instead of, you know, just going, downloading it, installing and using it because out of necessity, because, you know, out of, you know, finally understanding what we are about to change here uh, in the monetary uh, decentralized uh, system. So you are accepting this trade-off because why? Because you don't have a choice because no yeah. one yet uh, built anything that makes you not accept that trade-off. So, but I mean, there are ways to do it. It's just a lot of engineering and a lot of uh, blood, sweat, hard work. Uh, that's, 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 that's really about it. And you have to do it in a way that your users are not going to lose money. So it's not just a traditional uh, engineering, traditional programming where you're just referencing every package from right and here. And because in Bitcoin that if you're referencing the wrong package, right, uh, NPM, there were a problem with the Node.js implementation, Bitcoin wallet implementations. Uh, they referenced an NPM. Uh, <coughs> And that NPM referenced another NPM that maintainer gave the code to maintain to an anonymous contributor and that anonymous contributor was just waiting for the opportunity to, to infect your, your wallet, right? So why does Bitcoin Core is so slow? Because they are not taking the shortcuts. So you can you can be more sure about that what they are doing is that uh, your your money is going to be safer and not 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 going you're not going to be a prey for a really an attack that you you, you just can't really do anything about it right just right as a user. i mean you choose the wrong wallet and you're fucked <laughs> yeah yeah exactly no i understand what you say i mean that's why you know that's why i guess People, I guess most people, when they have a mobile wallet, they don't, you know, they don't uh, load up um, more than they would actually need for, you know, a small transaction, whatever, coffee. Uh, so, I guess, you know, as so, but do, would you say that, that the solutions are being worked on, or, or is it really a challenge until we have a, a really secure, reliable? trustless and really full of privacy features uh mobile wallet uh i mean with all every day with all these you know terminology going on with whatever channel here channel there <laughs> lightning network here and schnorr signature because people i think are really lost in that kind of uh, you know technical terminology and i guess at the end of the day they just want to know can i trust you know can i can I verify it or have it verified in some way or another without having to worry uh, that my Satoshis are going to be lost uh, because of some kind of incident? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So very good question. Uh, yes, the solutions are not only being worked on, but people are providing solutions to different problems and, you know, it, some people just has to bring them together like hardware wallets are working very hard on security bitcoin core is working very hard on consensus and validation and i'm working very hard on privacy and i mean there is really no good technical reason to not bring all this together it just the only reason is because it's a lot of work you know and someone has to do the work and we are all doing the works Mobile, yes, definitely. You will not be able to run a full node on mobile, but uh, but you will. But there are still solutions like uh, you can connect to someone else's full node on your mobile, and that's that's pretty good thing if you know that someone else. Uh, I expose my full node that's running in my room and a lot of people would trust me to to connect to it or something like that i, I don't think i would do that but uh, these kind of things th there are a lot of things we we have to find a sweet spot and also work on work on solutions uh, and and bring uh, different solutions together uh, yes that's that's what mm -hmm. i would say 
Let me ask you a practical question, uh, Napara, because, you know, I, I had this friend who constantly said, who is like really like cautious, he's like very reserved when it comes to Bitcoin still. He says, well, this is another, because he doesn't understand it, you know, he says it, it's another digital money and then he's again monitored and surveyed by the state, by the government, so, you know, he wants total privacy. So, um, when I go to this article, there were a couple of keywords, but, but let's go to the Wasabi wallet, back to the you know, features of Wasabi wallet. When you do a transaction with a Wasabi wallet, does that really mean, I mean, just you know, if you can explain it in layman terms, um, for, an, for the average person, when he does, when he, let's say an average person downloads and installs the Wasabi wallet, makes a transaction, and wants to be sure, totally confident that that his transactions or her transaction is definitely uh, not exposed in any in any way, cannot be found out, cannot be monitored, surveyed, or whatever. Uh, because you know, privacy. I guess there's a, people have different motives for privacy. But would you say was the Wasabi Wallet stands for you know the ultimate? Um, uh, privacy feature when you want to do you know a simple transaction or can you track it back well you see how far you want to go with this because if someone puts a virus just to monitor you on your computer then it doesn't matter what you're using you're you're done so it's there is always something that can be done uh, to, 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 to ruin someone's privacy right uh, or just simply putting a camera on their room and so 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 there is always something uh, what what can we do against more let's say realistic attack scenarios what are realistic attack scenarios that uh, i like the most important the most the most i like is that features those are not visible no one is talking about them because they are not visible but one feature is that's not visible is that how we are querying uh, how we are establishing our wallet balances because this is the huge issue that no other light wallet solved uh, except neutrino stratis b is my hidden wallet but uh, they are not that light uh, Never mind. Uh, this this is a very uh, invisible feature, and this is, this contributes huge to your privacy because you're not trusting in anyone to tell you the the thing, and by telling you the thing, you're exposing that. Okay, that's one. The transaction broadcasting part is the exact same thing that uh, well, who you are broadcasting it to anyway. Let's not go into it. That's 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 another invisible privacy feature there, where where many wallets can fail, although it's not that easy to fail there, but uh, still, uh, well, not that hard either. Never mind. Transaction broadcasting and you balance balance wallet balance establishing so that's two invisible privacy feature and there are there there is on on that what's going on on the blockchain now that's that's the big issue here uh because anyone can look at the blockchain uh so so what can we do about it and today practically speaking the only thing you can do about it is mixing now you could use a centralized mixer which you send them the money you don't have privacy against the centralized mixer because they know the links and they might even steal your money because that's how they work and anyway they are not using equal amounts so blockchain analysis these companies can uh, reverse the links uh, easily except with actually there is one centralized mixers that's a uh, that that is protecting you against so that is using equal amounts which called chip mixer and i don't know if it's like it or not but that's the only one that i see that, that at least uh, doing something against this 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 thing um, so what else can you do you can use join market which is pretty cool uh, <clears throat> and and wasabi and that's it you 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 were able to use blockchain infos shared coin they discontinued it <clears throat> i i wasn't in 
uh, I wasn't looking at it. They said it's, it was not that good and that's why they discontinued it. I don't know, it was better than nothing. So yeah, whatever, I, I, I don't know that much, but that was a very practical thing to do too. Yeah, I mean, I'm aware of that. That you know, I mean, certainly it 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 makes sense when you say, uh, you know, it all there can always happen something. I mean, you, there's no guarantee. But I'm just saying, if you take the you know the precautionary measures uh, and you're you know careful and cautious enough and aware of all these things, and you know, you're not you don't do. I mean, if, if people you know are not naive or 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 you know do stupid stuff <laughs> uh without thinking i guess you can you can be on the you, you can be on the on the safe side right i mean on yeah yeah sure i mean if you fire up your wasabi click mix it mixes and then you can spend the mixed coins uh, it's 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 really that simple i mean i'm i'm really over complicating it because i'm going into the explanation but uh, yeah. From a, from a user perspective, I think it's really that simple. Uh, and unless you do very, very stupid things, then you don't have to worry about anything. What is a very stupid thing to do? To grab your hardware wallet, put all your money into Wasabi, mix all your money into Wasabi, and then put back your hardware wallet. Why is it stupid thing to do? Because your hardware wallet communicates with your hardware wallet provider to establish your wallet balance so basically your, your hardware wallet provider see that hey uh you sent out money this much five bitcoin and five bitcoin mixed bitcoin came back to the same wallet so i mean you can't protect people from that uh of course we have that hardware wallet integration now so it's 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 not that bad anymore but uh, th there are some, yes, so Wasabi should be used as a spending wallet. It was not really figured out in a way that it can interact with the other wallets. Those are insecure from a privacy point of view. Uh, what, what's another stupid thing to do? Like, like taking your Wasabi extended public key and putting it to another application that is watching uh, your, your, your wallet. Right, so if they are watching your wallet, uh, like like oh, you can see on your mobile that how much money you have in your Wasabi. I uh, guess what? It's not only you can see that, but the guy who is providing you the data. <laughs> so so yeah. So um, you just mentioned the hardware wallet. Now, if somebody wants to again, uh, j um, let me clarify this for people. Um, if you have a, a Trezor wallet, for example, and you connect it to the Wasabi wallet and you do like a small transaction, I mean, is it already possible with both models of the Trezor wallet to to make a small transaction and, you know, uh, you know, uh, sort of um, total decouple the whole process from, you know, from, uh, that's why we have a hardware wallet, I guess, you know, to, to decouple the whole, you know, process of entering the pin and, and the whole uh, signing and signing off and signing off. Um, is, uh, On, yeah. Only Trezor model T. Okay. Because mm -hmm. That's what I had uh, access to, but I just got, so it's with me right now. Uh, I got the Trezor, uh, what's the Trezor one. So now you will be able, you are already able to use Trezor one. It's just, there is a function that uh, when, when you have pin code on your Trezor one that has to be typed in the computer. Mm -hmm. Now that function is not implemented yet okay. because I didn't have a Trezor one, so I couldn't uh, implement it, but now I have a Trezor one. So it just, uh, it just, well, it, it's going to be in the next release, even though we have feature really feature freeze. Uh, it, it's it's something that has to be done because it's a it's 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 almost it's it's so missing that it's almost like a bug to not not have it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, are you guys uh, with your team working on the or or planning to? Um, you know, make this user interface a little bit more, you know, as not aesthetic is the wrong word, but really uh, uh, like like um, intuitive is the word I think I'm looking for. Um, 
first, you know, I guess for most people who are already in the Bitcoin, uh, you know, scenery and they, they are already, you know, they have experience, it, might, it not, might not be a big deal. But I thought if we can, if you guys can make the user interface a little bit more just, you know, sort of a simplified user face for the, for the beginners, sort of, you know, for the newbies. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you can still have, I guess, you know, in the advanced section, okay, you got this feature and that feature, but maybe people are a little bit overwhelmed by, you know, all these, <laughs> you know, clicking and, and, and boxes that you have check in and, and, and it might be a little bit too much, maybe simplified a little bit. Would that be a, you know, an option? I would start with snappiness. <laughs> okay. uh, in a, in a way that uh, it responds much faster and better. And uh, I don't want to add new features, except if it's really hidden from from what's, what's going on. I think we, we did a good job with that uh, in, in the way that the first set of features, those have been implemented the first time, then we, we added it to the wallet. And from there on, almost every feature that we added, we somehow hide, he made it hidden. So people were, were not getting confused. Now, there must be some You know what's the main issue here is that uh, if, if we are zooming out of the micro, then you, you, can, you can see that like with the early internet that uh, things were progressing so fast that user experience were not able to keep up with it. Yeah. And yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's exactly the same that we, we, we add something and then we have to fix the UI, but there is another thing you have to work on. But yes, right now it's, that time when we have to work on the user interface. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I'm very, very, very aware of the problem. Yeah, no, you really, you really, you really did a great job. I mean, uh, I really must say because otherwise I wouldn't have installed it. You know, otherwise I would have just, uh, yeah. So, um, so I guess, you know, as long as people, you know, can can enter this, uh, you know, the Wasabi wallet, load up the wallet, do a simple transaction you know, send, receive, verify, whatever, your account balance. I guess if that is really easy, to, you know, uh, feasible, then, you know, then there is no need, you know, to, to modify it in a, you know, in, in really, in, 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 in a, uh, yeah. You know, you know what's the, the, the issue, yeah, we are really going into, to, to remove the, the coin control feature. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would improve a lot in the user experience. There is a coin control feature which is required to use. But why is it required to use? Because if you are not aware of your coins, then you ruin your privacy. So it's required. But we need better privacy schemes. Mm -hmm. And there are, I already know some, there are better privacy schemes. Those can work in a way that you don't need the coin control feature anymore. So it's not really fixing the UI because that's something I'm not compromising on because it's very, very important for privacy. But implement a mix where you are not on mixing to yourself like what you are doing right now, but you are actually mixing to other people. And that's where we really have to get to. Uh, now, it, I, I also had a very, very interesting idea before that because, because in Bitcoin, if you are not aware of your coins in your wallet, then your privacy is, is aware. So what can you do about it to make it more user friendly? Imagine you have a mobile wallet that's, that basically has nothing on it except a white screen. It's, it's a white screen. And then you start, you, you push it. What, what do you do with the white screen? You push it. And What's what's happening now? It throws up a Bitcoin address for you. The QR code. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't be simple for so that. Yeah, I like it. You, you send, you send the money there. Yeah. And what's going to happen there? It becomes a bubble, and that bubble is your coin. 
That's pretty so, nice, actually. It's a pretty cool idea. I mean, you know, yeah. it, it's it's sort of plays in a in a in a playful way. People, you know, especially for people who really, for the first time, you know, um, uh, are you know, get in touch with with uh, with the world of Bitcoin. And I think that would be like wow, you know, like a wow experience. Like wow, for the first time, I'm able to do this, you know, without any help, without any assistance, without worrying about oh my god, you know, uh, having some kind of paranoia. And you know, in this kind of world where you know, you constantly have to be alert, you know, virus scanner, malware bytes, uh, you know, all kinds of software. Uh, is the whatever the source valid or authenticated? It's like so many things you have to think of. So if you can like take away all these words and concerns from the first time, uh, what do you call it, user uh, or consumer or whatever, that would be a huge thing, I think, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a... Uh... It's it's one of those features that uh, requires extensive graphics uh, programming of graphics, right? Because bubbles and graphs and uh, moving those bubbles and things like that. Uh, so it's it's not 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 that easy. It's not that hard. Uh, many people have done it before. It just uh, it's just not a simple showing you a list or showing you something. But but still the that's 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 a really interesting idea i don't know how how good, how how useful would it be but i would i would really like to do it one day or maybe we won't even need uh, the coins anymore because we just have such a good mixing techniques that uh, we don't need coins we'll we'll see either we build the bubbles or we we obsolete the coins concept so, yeah I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're really an in-depth expert, as I see. Uh, uh, when I see, I mean, when I, uh, when just, I just, scroll, you know, scroll through your articles on medium.com. It's, by the way, medium.com for the uh, listeners, slash at Nopara73. And your uh, Twitter handler, if, I, you know, just uh, for people who want to follow you, uh, it's uh, at no, uh, the same thing, at Nopara73. So uh, can I ask you, um, Nopara, are there any like topics or you know points that you are right now working on that you can that you are allowed or uh, to talk about, be it, you know for future development or visions, ideas that you guys have with your team, uh, that you are you know not only write about uh, obviously. I mean, I have a little bit, a couple of questions uh, if we have a little bit more time. Uh, but is there like a topic that you are personally totally interested in and want to work on this really passionately uh, in the next, I don't know, days, weeks, months? Yes. What I'm most concerned about is the bus factor. So what we built is a sustainable project with revenue so people can, so this can be like maintained because not many things can be maintained in an open source environment. Uh, but still way too many things are depending on me and I'm not happy. One of the things that you don't care about, most users don't care about, but I care about a lot to, to add Bitcoin Core to Wasabi, to ship with Bitcoin Core, because that's very, very important for the network, the whole. And if while I am here at Wasabi, if we don't add Bitcoin Core, then it's just gonna be, you know, a business and making business decisions and business makes, hey, makes no sense to add Bitcoin Core. So I just wanna add it before, before it becomes a business, you know, <laughs> until it's a fun project, until I'm here. So Bitcoin Core integration, that's one very important thing. The other thing is that I'm not sure when it is the right time to work, start working on that, is that the Lightning Wallet, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Lightning Network integration. I'm really not sure about that when. I'm sure about the, it must be coming because any Bitcoin wallet who wants to stay in business that has to implement Lightning Network because, you know, blockchains don't scale. So <laughs> it's just the simple truth. <laughs> uh, was oh yeah, hardware wallet integration. Well, we did it, but we could do in a better way. I am not quite sure because there are, so right now with hardware wallets, you cannot use the coin join, the mixing function, which is just 
terrible. Okay. So what can we can do. Okay. Yeah. Can you explain that? Uh, the coin join, you know, for people out uh, uh, who are not familiar with that, what does it mean, coin join? I mean, what's the, what's the feature? What's the advantage of coin join? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very simple. Uh, you have one Bitcoin, I have two Bitcoin, you create a transaction and I create a transaction and we join the two transactions together. And now the trick is that we have to cho join in a way that we don't lose the privacy because if you send two Bitcoin to that guy, I send one Bitcoin to that guy, then it's going to be one Bitcoin input, one Bitcoin output. Mm -hmm. Two Bitcoin input, two Bitcoin output. So you know, you know exactly which which things are matching with inputs correspond to which outputs, mm -hmm. and this is the big trick of the centralized mixers, uh, with the exception of cheap mixer, that they they don't advertise that their things are actually working the exact same way. <laughs> it just <laughs> anyway. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's a hard, relatively hard concept. It's also easy, but for some people it's hard, especially for new timers. So what do you do about it? You have two Bitcoin, I have one Bitcoin. So what we do is that we, we create outputs in a way that two Bitcoin comes in, one Bitcoin goes out, one Bitcoin goes out, one Bitcoin comes in, one Bitcoin goes out. Mm -hmm. So you don't know who, which input corresponds to which, which input corresponds to which outputs, which of the three outputs, because the amounts are exactly equal. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's called, is that still called coin join? Or is that another uh, name? Yes. Okay. Yes, this that's coin join. Mm -hmm. There is some debate about that. Should we call coin join? Is just uh, if multiple people come together and make a transaction um, but in a way that uh, amounts are not counted for should we call it coin join uh, some people do some people don't i prefer to do it because then multiple people joining their coins together so yeah we should call it coin join even though it doesn't provide privacy but anyway yeah there there are coin joins and there are coin joins yeah <laughs> Interesting. Um, Napara, where, where do you see uh, where do you see the next five to ten years in, in this kind of process of of development of of evolution uh, within the Bitcoin dimension? What do you see? What kind of vision do you have? Yeah, that's that's a very very important question, and I have I think it's it will. I think it will all come down to us, right? Like we can build an internet, we can, Bitcoin can be the, the mass surveillance tool of the future if we build it that way. If we build it that way that it will be the most liberating tool of the future, then maybe Maduro doesn't go through people with tanks uh, in Venezuela because yeah. Uh, that's it just happened in like yesterday or before yesterday and i i become really you know like it's it's just not good to see things like that yeah yeah it's really a a mess right now that's going on everywhere uh and i think the sort of as we would say in german we would say the you know something is cooking inside the pot so it's it's like you know almost <laughs> but it's like it's i think it's going to be something uh if you know if things really spiral off or you know become unchained this whole chain reaction of whatever monetary financial economical scenarios we have i think that's going to some be something in my opinion that we have never you know humanity has never had before whether that be you know in the in the 20s or in the or 2008 or it's that all those things that's like in the past in history uh will be peanuts compared to what is coming and i think on the other hand i think i mean what do you think about that you do you think it's actually uh, accelerating the, the 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 what do you call it the education the acceptance of bitcoin uh the process of you know of internalization of bitcoin 
because, you know, it's sort of a yin and yang as I see it. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, really a lot of shit going on around this planet. But on the other hand, I'm like, maybe it's actually, you know, promoting. Um, because people are, most people, to be honest with you, I think are still, they don't have the pain points as in Venezuela, or Iran, Turkey, Argentina, and so, you know. So I'm like, uh, either people, this is what I always say, either people have the pain points, they feel it existentially, economically, monet, uh, financially, or they understand what is possible once they start, you know, uh, learning, understanding, comprehending what it is about, and then start hodling at least a fraction of a Bitcoin. You see, if you think about it, Bitcoin really makes no sense. If you accept that premise that our world is working properly, right? Because our central banks are doing a good job and carefully managing the money supply and interest rates. Uh, if you accept that, then Bitcoin makes no sense because why the hell would you throw out so much electricity and and accelerate uh, global warming or whatever? Like like it just it's just a stupid idea in that way. But if some people think, hey, maybe things don't work that well, maybe maybe <clears throat> then then that's when a censorship resistant and decentralized money makes sense because decentralization have a lot of overhead. This is the same reason why blockchains, the idea of creating blockchains uh, makes no sense because those people who want to build blockchains, they accept that, hey, the world is working properly. So let's build something that that's that makes the word not working properly. You see, this, this, there is a fallacy there that, that makes no sense in, in that way. So, so yes, uh, the things that are happening in the world are definitely uh, accelerating Bitcoin adoption. And this is not a good thing because we didn't really figure out that how to scare to so many people yet. So I hope we will have like, I don't know, 20, 30 years until, until really the mass comes in because, because it's, it's, it's not that easy, you know, and if, if they come in, then what's going to happen? They are going to use all Coinbase because our, our decentralized paradise is just full of bugs and doesn't work and <laughs> not compatible with each other. So yeah, we, we have to do a lot of engineering and hope hope the world is not going to collapse before we, we are ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Well said. Um, let me ask you one, uh, one thing about, because you, you wrote an article, I found it pretty hilarious what you wrote. Um, where is it? Uh, sort of the, the, the bitcoins of, of Satoshi Nakamoto, like, uh, yeah. Who I don't find it at, at, on this page. You know, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, um, I always thought about why did Satoshi Nakamoto, if if you know, if I if I was Satoshi Nakamoto, because I always say, okay, let me let me put myself into his shoes. Um, if I had the knowledge and had the vision, the ethos of Satoshi Nakamoto, and then, uh, and as he, you know, as we know, he reserved for himself one million bitcoins. That's one twenty-one, uh, right, of 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 the total mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. amount of bitcoins uh, of twenty-one million. So why would he do that? Um, would he have? I mean, do you do you think it? Do you think he had a he had an intention behind that? Uh, Maybe I'm maybe I'm too much into science fiction right now. But the reason I'm asking is that what if he, you know. Uh, what if he thought to himself, if if humanity, be, uh, you know, becomes evolved and and the whole thing, pro you know, processes so fast and people finally accept it as the the one monetary root layer? Um, if I was Satoshi Nakamoto, I would wait until that moment and then redistribute uh, until that time the one Bitcoin would be worth, I don't know, 100,000, a million, whatever amount, but an exponential value. And then sort of 
distribute that to every everybody who has, you know, uh, a public address. I mean, it sounds a little bit stupid what I'm saying, maybe, but um, I'm I'm just thinking why why did he reserve the the one million satoshi uh, uh, bitcoins for himself? Do you think? Yeah, I think he's just he's just just messing around with with these like we are messing around with testnet coins, right? Like Nicola Doria sent me a hundred testnet coin uh, about three years ago or four years ago. I have 10 testnet coin left. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I, you know, just, you know, you're developing and getting shit down and you don't have time to, to, to care about these worthless things, even if, you know, you, you you really need those testnet coins because it's just such a pain to get get those back and i i think i think this is the simplest explanation but it is possible that some kind of grand grander plan behind it i i don't know that would be actually good because of quantum computers right if if yeah. if then whatever comp quantum computers able to steal it uh then they will steal it and uh wh what are we doing uh, we can hard fork it but we are not going to hard fork it because there is no consensus to that so they are going to steal it not not the first quantum computers not google not microsoft who knows but when it really becomes something that uh, everyday people or or the first hacker first quantum hacker <laughs> in the world like you know to 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 get back that money uh it's 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 a really 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 good question that i think there is no grandiose plan behind it uh it just he was just messing around and lost lost it uh, one by one uh, that's that's really my... okay that's interesting okay because we're talking about one million bitcoins i mean that you know if it was just you know i thought he was just playing around you know he could have reserved himself i don't know or yeah, you know we don't really know if it's his it, uh yeah there was chain analysis who who was doing a webinar on bitcoin whales and they said they don't consider Satoshi a Bitcoin whale because they don't really know if it's, if he, you know, there is no way to, to, to really guess, hey, are, are these coins really Satoshi's? Just, uh, mm -hmm. some people were saying, oh, Satoshi was actually still attacking the Bitcoin network in order to be able to do hard forks uh, early on. Uh, but really, no one really knows what Satoshi was doing because it's so uh, wog. Uh, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, Nopara, what would you, do you have any final comments? I mean, I'm, I'm going to put up your links and information, but is, are there any final thoughts uh, or comments or anything, uh, you know, you want to share with people that uh, you think is really important to know at this stage? Yes, uh, I think you should you should get shit done, and by getting shit done, I mean you choose your wallet how what's the most appropriate for the things that you want to do in your life, and uh, you don't have to try anything out because it's cool. Uh, that would be my my thing. I I really don't. I mean, I'm not happy when people say very basic questions uh, because that takes away developer time and i mean you know i'm getting there uh, i'm developing the software in a way that you don't have to ask that anymore so maybe 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 if you're if you're somewhat familiar with bitcoin then feel free to try out wasabi but otherwise uh, maybe it's not for you you know not not yet anyway okay Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, uh, Nopara, for your time. And it was really insightful and uh, you're really knowledgeable. Uh, I can see that. It just, um, um, I think uh, people really need to educate themselves and open up uh, and, and really ask, ask maybe ask, uh, also ask the right questions. And um, unfortunately, I mean, for the German speaking people, there's a lot of, most of the stuff is in, is in English. Uh, 
but this is, you know, um, I mean, I'm also doing po podcasts and videos in German so that the German speak people, people who really don't understand or speak any, any, any word of English can follow up on these kind of things. So, um, you know, education, I guess, is really essential thing to, to, yeah, to emphasize uh, every time. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Hope to get you on your on my show next time on some other <laughs> maybe insightful topics. All right. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much and I'll All see right. you soon. Bye bye.